We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Josh Horn with us from Social Security. The number up on the screen, 737-7587. If you have a question about Social Security, disability, you're applying for benefits right now, you haven't heard back, should you take early retirement, all those types of things. And if it's not you, but someone you know that's dealing with this and wants to give us a holler, give us a call now. The line's open. You can talk directly to the man. Next up is Tammy. Tammy, good morning. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. I've got a question for you. Okay. I've been having a, I've been having a go to Mike Manville Social Security office to get my check every month. Hmm. They, they send it to the bank like they're supposed to, like they've been doing. I've been having to go up there and pick them up and have them set in line and, and all that. And I don't know what's going on. So they sent two checks one time to the bank and I took it back to them. Paid it back to them to get my check. Why, why are they but not they mailing it? Why are they not mailing it to you anymore? I don't know. I can't hmm. figure that out. Well, how'd they you, say I, I owe them, but I don't. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. So, but but you were getting it mailed to you. Then all of a sudden, it just stopped. Did they call you and tell yes. you? Did they call and tell you you had to go to the bank, or how did you realize you had to go to the office to pick it up? I went to the bank to get my check, and they said it wasn't there. Oh. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, what could be the reasoning behind that? I don't yeah, and was it? Are you having to go have them cut you a check, or is it just? Yeah. Yeah. So. Every month they have to cut a check. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like there may be some problems going on with your record. The only time that we would have, you know, a situation where we were actually writing you a check, is uh, kind of an kind of in very very unusual circumstances, and usually the number one reason why we would be writing somebody a check uh, every month is because there is some kind of problem going on with the record and you mentioned a previous overpayment and uh, that's... Yeah, I took it back to them. <laughs> yeah, and so it sounds like it's at the payment center, that the payment center is trying to straighten your record out. Some, sometimes when you have an overpayment involved, uh, there can cause some problems on, on the, the record, on the system, and so it sounds like the payment center is trying to work on that and fix that, but in the meantime, the best we can do is try to write you a check so that we don't, so that your, you know, benefits aren't affected. Okay. I, I didn't know, uh, you know, I asked them were they going to send it to the bank in January, and they tell me, yeah, but when I go, it ain't there. In January? Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, if that's what they told you, I mean, when did you go last to, to talk to them? I went up, I was up there yesterday. yesterday. That's what I thought. So, uh, but it sounds like maybe the situation is getting resolved if it's going to be, if it's going to be in the bank in January. So, yeah. So, yeah, the, the, hopefully then, all right, well, Josh will be back in January. Yeah. If you don't get your check in January like you expect, do you usually get it at the 1st or the 15th of the month? Okay. When, when do you get the check during the month usually? When is it? It generally come comes on the first. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, hopefully, then in the new year, if it's been resolved and that's what they told you, you should get the check the way you expect it. If not, then clearly, yeah, there's some clerical mix up or something else going on here, and you can call us back or, yeah, just get back on it. Yeah, that's a drag for her to have to drive out there and get it personally every time. It should be easy yeah. enough to mail. Yeah, we yeah we or, have or some direct deposit rather unusual circumstances, and I hate that for her because I know that can be really inconvenient. But I hope that you know it sounds like we're getting it resolved. So, but yeah, just uh, give us a call. You can always talk to a supervisor as well if the uh, person that you're talking to, uh, you know, isn't able to communicate. You know what's going on well enough. Let's go to uh, Mildred next. Hi, Mildred. Hello, Mildred. Hey, hey, I don't know. Uh, I have a race when it's going to get this year. <laughs> okay, good, Mildred. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it. That was back in uh, early November, right? Yeah, we yeah. Well, it's a 1.6% uh, increase in 2020, and you should be. It's another thing that I uh, meant to mention earlier, but the, those notices uh, should be coming out. So check your mailboxes. Uh, you should be getting a notice letting you know how much your your specific benefit is going to be increasing. But, you know, whatever it is, it's going to be 1.6%. Uh, more uh, starting in 2020 and now we also talked about there's a nine dollar increase in Medicare uh, Part B premiums too so you know you're gonna have to do a little math there uh, but hopefully you should be getting your notice here pretty soon I'll tell you specifically yeah and I, I listen to people like Mildred and and they're they look forward to that it's almost like if you're on Social Security coming mm -hmm. the end of the year that maybe you're getting some type of raise mm -hmm. and it always varies and it always changes like raises and you know jobs do but 
it's just not a lot of money. And yeah. I, Mildred, I know every penny counts for someone like her, but it's not a lot, especially if it's balanced out with these other with increases. The Medicare, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but at least that, that would help balance that out. So, yeah, it won't be a lot, but you are getting an increase. And uh, that's just, that, that could be like 10 bucks a month, something along those lines for a lot of these checks. Exactly. All right. Well, keep your eye out, Mildred. It'll be coming. You are getting an increase. At least they're not taking money away. <laughs> Let's go to Linda. Linda, good morning. Hi, Linda. Uh, yes, Josh just answered my question. Oh. I was going to ask him how much Medicare was going up. Yeah, is that a, is that going to put you in a pickle? Is that are you going to be able to handle I'll, that? I'll get a little I'll get a little raise, and uh, even though they'll take the nine dollars out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's... I mean, it won't be much, but I'll get a little bit, and I'm a widow, so that'll help me out a little bit. Good. Okay. Well, okay. yeah. I appreciate okay. your call, ma'am. Thank you. All yeah. right. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you. You too. Yeah. So she at least has a, a game plan in place. Mm -hmm. Sounds like she'll have, well, I mean, what choice does anyone have anyway, though? It's going to happen. But Right. Now, the one thing, too, is if you have a Medicare Advantage plan or you have a prescription mm -hmm. drug plan, you know, those costs vary. And they change, you know, year to year depending on, because they're, uh, they're uh, by the private providers and this is open season right now so you know the, this is a time where you can make changes to that if you need to uh, but that's something that you'll have to look at individually to see you know if your if your either your advantage plan or your prescription drug plan is changing I don't know yeah that's something yeah you got to look at and uh, you know, the bottom line is these folks are living on a fixed income if this is and they budget for it and then maybe they get a little cost of in increase but other costs increase right. so every year they have to reevaluate and in some cases that means they have to go without in some other aspect of their lives because prices go up and that's a shame mm -hmm. that's tough let's let's go next to Doug Doug good morning hi Doug hey how you doing good Doug okay uh, I don't know this may be more of a tax question than, than a social security question but this is my first year growing social security and my wife has a social security disability uh, are they treated separate or differently that, or that can we file you think you can file them both together as income with the IRS or yeah I mean when you when you file you know if you're filing you know like married filing jointly with the IRS I mean you're gonna have to include the Social Security income uh, but uh, depending on what how much we're talking about it may not be taxable uh, but it but it will be included on there you should be getting a 1099 by the end of January that you'll include with your taxes so, okay, so yeah so they'll be on the 1099 mm -hmm. then for both whether it's Regular Social Security or disability. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Okay. Is that is that primary your primary income now, or do you have other income in addition to that? No, I have military retirement also. Okay. Okay. Well, that kind of in a way, yeah. At least now you know that they'll both be on there and to be addressed. And we had that earlier caller about whether you should file, and I think uh, Carl though knows that uh, he uh, Doug rather knows he should. Mm -hmm. Go ahead mm -hmm. and uh, file with that and see how it plays out. And same thing with your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, he said he had a military retirement, so I don't know. He has two that he's drawing on. He'll have to put that all on there and see whether it reaches certain limits. Right. Which probably won't, but you never know. Let's go next to Carl. Carl, good morning. Hi, Carl. Hi. Hey, how can we help you, sir? Well, I'm uh, 73 years old, and I'm retired from the federal government, and... Uh, to supplement my income, I have to find odd jobs during the year. So I do, and uh, I'm a pretty decent carpenter, and I do carpenter work, but every year I turn those uh, funds into the Social Security, and my check doesn't go up any. I mean, I thought once I paid into it, it should uh, increase my uh, monthly income. Right. So that's a good question. So what we what we do in order to determine how much your benefits are is we take the highest 35 years of your income and uh, and we index all that up to today's standards. So because we know 30 years ago, you know, the, the, the wages were different than they are now. So we bring everything up to today's standards and we take the highest 35 years, whatever those years are. Uh, and that's what goes into the calculation. Now, if you worked full time for 35 years, um, and then you retire and you're just doing, I believe you said odd jobs and, and, and part-time carpentry work, most likely that work is not going to be enough to knock out one of those other 35 years 
uh, because you know th those are you know, those are where you were working full time, and so you're probably not going to see an increase in your monthly Social Security check uh, because it's just part time work. Now, for somebody who may have been a homemaker or taking care of kids or not worked for 20 years or something along those lines and they've got a whole bunch of zero years in that 35 year calculation and then after retirement they go back even if it's part time it's still more than some of those zero years that we're taking into account and those are the folks that really see uh, an increase whenever they uh, are working part time after retirement so I hope that helps. Yeah I think Carl probably he's 73 and I'm sure worked more than what did you say 33 years top 35 thir 35 yeah. I mean top 35 years right yep. so he's worked more than 35 years um, and I think the general public may have a misconception that Social Security is drawn on your lifetime body of work and that Carl's working now some more mm -hmm. and so more money should go into that pool they go to him what what he and others need to understand is it's only based as you said on your 35 highest earned years so those other years you worked doesn't go into some pot it's just based on the 35 so if what you're earning now is more than what you made the lowest earning year of that 35 years, then it'll bump it out and you will maybe see a modest increase. But if you're making less now than you did at the least you made in those 35 years, you'll see no change. And that's, but that's what's tricky. So he's probably thinking, well, well, if they're taking Social Security out of my check right now, mm -hmm. why the heck isn't it showing up in my check and adding to it? Right. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, the government gets to keep <laughs> all that extra Social Security money they take out outside of those 35 top years. That's really the way it works. Well, you guys goes, get to keep yeah. the rest of it, that. Well, it goes into the trust fund. Goes into the fund, and it pays for others. That's the way it others. works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's probably where it was at. He assumed, I'm still working. Why don't I get more? It's only based on your top 35 earning years, and you're not making as much as you did in the past. We'll take a break. When we come back, we've got some lines open still. Final segment, 737-7587. Evan and others, stay there. We'll get to you. But uh, if you want to jump in, some good questions this morning. We'll be back with more right after this.